Hello everybody, this is John from DroidDog.com and the purpose of this video is to compare the camera software on Samsung's Epic 4G and HTC's Evo 4G, which are both WiMAX devices on the Sprint network. Uh, this video is part of a larger post at DroidDog.com where I compare the photos and video from each of these devices. So if you're watching this at YouTube, go ahead and click the link underneath the video there for the full post. So first, let's uh, go ahead and open up the camera on both devices. And we'll just take a look at the different options each one offers. Now when you first open the camera software on each device, you'll notice that these look very similar. You have some basic options on the right side, and then on the left there's a dock with more settings. Uh, when you open up the camera software in Sense on the Evo up here, those settings are, are uh, closed. And on the Epic down here, they are open by default, and I'm even asked, am I going to be recording for MMS, or do I want full quality video? Uh, so first I'll go down through the options with the video option selected. This button up here toggles between still photos and movies. And go back to movies here. First option, normal or limit for MMS, so it'll shoot a uh, lower quality compressed video. Next option down, do you want the flash off or on for movies, and both phones can do this. Next option is exposure value and then further settings. Uh, outdoor visibility just changes the display so it's easier to see in the sunshine. Uh, there's a timer, you can change the resolution all the way from 320 by 240 up to 1280 by 720, full 720p video recording. And then you have these pages to go down and adjust white balance effects, simple effects there. Uh, video quality, which I have set at the highest for all of my sample shots. And you can get guidelines for a grid. Uh, audio recording off and on, review and reset. On the right side of the screen you have start and stop recording and then this one just to play your samples. Switching over to still photos, I have my shooting mode available here, two pages. Next button down is flash, off, on, or auto, exposure, and further settings. Again you have a resolution setting here from, uh, whoops, 800 by, or I'm sorry, 640 by 480 at the smallest, up to uh, 2560 by 1920. So all of the sample photos were taken at 2560 by 1920 and then resized for the purpose of fitting them in the post. Timer, white balance, effects, ISO, metering, anti-shake, auto contrast, blink detection, image quality, and then over here you have guidelines again, review and uh, do you want it to be geotagged. Take a shot here and again look at the gallery. So as for focusing, uh, let's see if we get a good example here. This is kind of strange. Using the Epic I can say, let's say there's a face right there I want it to focus on. It'll, it'll use that as the focal point and I don't have a lot of room to test that out here but it does work well. Now the HTC Sense camera settings are tucked away here in this little sliding dock. First one is do you want to shoot photo or video? So instead of being on the right side like it is with the Epic, you have it over here buried in the settings. Brightness, uh, contrast saturation and sharpness, effects, and you have a, a few more effects there than you do on the uh, Epic's TouchWiz camera software. And at the bottom, other advanced settings like ISO, um, you can change the quality here, keep it up on high, geotagging, metering mode, review duration. So, you know, if you don't like waiting to see a preview of the image before you take another one, you want to change that, which actually I might as well do right now because I don't like that very much. Uh, autofocus, face detection, stutter sound, time stamp, set it down in time stamp, grid. A lot of similar stuff here. Sense has a few more options. Uh, and this is, you know, a higher end camera if you uh, consider uh, 8 megapixels against 5 to be a big difference, but there's a lot more to it than megapixels, of course. Here you have a quick flash on-off auto switch, which is, you know, nice to have right on the screen there. I prefer it for low light shooting sometimes. Um, a flash just washes somebody out and you don't like that and rather have a dim shot that you can manipulate later. Here you have quick access to zooming. I'll show you how to do that on the Epic as well in just a second. Your uh, shutter button and the gallery. 
Now if we select video, your options are pretty much the same. You lose that fast zoom button, uh, brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness. I think it's all the same effects there. And uh, everything else is the same. Because the Evo has a front and rear camera, you have an option to select. So there. See my finger and my camera. So. And you can even do mirror mode. I don't know if you saw that when I was on the front facing camera. Oh, and I don't want to forget that, I'm not sure if I mentioned this already, that you can use the flash on the Evo while you're in video mode. And the Evo has a dual LED flash, whereas the Epic, let's see. Do I have to start recording to turn on the... Yeah, okay. So the Evo lets me turn on the flash so I can look around and find my subjects and figure out what I'm going to film before I hit record. The Epic requires you to be recording for the flash to be used uh, with video. Uh, let me turn off the lights here. I'm not sure how well this is going to come across in terms of seeing the difference in brightness between the two. Um, in the samples, you'll notice, because I'm posting photos and videos from a pitch black room, the Evo is... Um, Hmm. You know, rather than saying which one looks brighter to me, I'll, I'll just let the, uh, the samples speak for themselves. So again, if you're watching this at YouTube, go ahead and click the link below the video. I've got all kinds of uh, photo and video samples from each device posted there for your consideration, so you can decide which you like better between the Evo 4G's 8 megapixel dual LED and the uh, Epic's single LED flash 5 megapixel camera.